the course of history is a dark one. In 1826, the first ever photograph was taken, ushering in a new age of documentation. Now, the harrowing events once heard of through only books and word of mouth could be frozen forever in history. Even the darkest moments do not escape this medium. We are Politics 1001. Stanley Foreman, 1975. Stanley Foreman was working for the Boston Herald on July 22, 1975 as a photojournalist when he received word of a fire on Marlboro Street. He arrived on the scene to witness a woman and presumably her child on a fifth floor fire escape waiting for help from the firefighters on the street below. As he was photographing them, suddenly it collapsed and the woman and her child plunged to the street below. He said, I was shooting pictures as they were falling, then I turned away. It dawned on me what was happening, and I didn't want to see them hit the ground. I can still remember turning around and shaking. But what he didn't realize, in that moment, he captured a photo that would win him a Pulitzer Prize and would lead to more safety regulations when it comes to fire escape, but also bring up an important debate over disturbing images being published for years to come. In 1613, the Romanov dynasty took over ruling Imperial Russia and would continue to do so until the end of the empire three centuries later. Tsar Nicholas II, the last Tsar of the mighty empire, and his family were brutally executed by the Bolshevik revolutionaries at the start of the Communist Revolution. This room pictured here was the remnants of what was seen post-execution. Tsar Nicholas II, his wife Alexandra, and their five children, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei, along with some of his retainers of the Ibatif house. They were woken up, told to get dressed and line up in preparation for a photograph. As they lined up, a Bolshevik firing squad rushed in, shooting the Romanov family that left breathing was stabbed. The execution remained largely a mystery until this photo was given to Harvard University, depicting the blood-stained walls ripped by bullets, proof of the Soviet regicide in a chilling look at the mere moments after one of the more gruesome betrayals in history was to have occurred. This is what marked the beginning of the Soviet Union. April 10, 1912. The RMS Titanic, the biggest ship of her kind on the ocean, left Southampton on her maiden voyage, first stopping in France and then finally Queenstown, Ireland, before making her way to New York Harbor. Irish Jesuit priests Francis Brown sailed on her for the first leg of the voyage before departing in Ireland, much to the dismay of the new friends he had made on board. As the friends he made slowly sailed away across the Atlantic Ocean, he stopped to picture, noticing the steam as it faded away on the horizon. Little did he know, the Titanic would not make it to New York. On April 15, 1912, she crashed into an iceberg, and within two hours and 40 minutes, she sunk beneath the waves, taking with her 1,500 people in one of the world's most infamous and sorrowful maritime disasters. The Ottoman Empire, founded in 1299 AD, was a powerful Islamic caliphate that spread across the Middle East, North Africa, and Europe. This powerful nation was ruled by the House of Osman, and as seen here in the photo, Sultan Mehmed VI was leaving his imperial palace in Constantinople, now known today as modern-day Istanbul. The Sultan was being exiled to Italy after the monarchy was officially abolished by the Turkish parliament. 
after being exiled to Italy. The Sultan lived only six more years before eventually succumbing to the fate of old age, thereby ending the reign of the Ottoman Empire. At the turn of the 20th century, the Native American population, whose once great civilization sprawled across the North and South American continents, had declined significantly, and the last revenants were forced farther and farther west, and often onto reservations, or forced to assimilate into the white population's culture. Edward X. Kudis, fearing the demise of the Native American population, and with them, their unique culture, decided to photograph and catalog 80 tribes for more than two decades, culminating into a 20-volume chronicle called the North American Indian. The most famous photo from this chronicle is entitled The Vanishing Race and depicts the natives on horseback slowly fading into the horizon, the last of a great civilization and a once great people slowly walking farther and farther westward and slowly declining. The Vulture and the Little Girl, taken by Kevin Carter, a journalist from South Africa, was taken on March 26, 1993. This photo was meant to emphasize the mass starvation going on around the continent, and this one, taken in South Sudan, as of now, was able to bring the attention of starvation to the Western world, creating a large emphasis on not only nonprofits, but general activism meant to contribute to the mass starvation going on on the continent. As seen in the background, a vulture is waiting for this child to die, to succumb to her starvation, so he can eat her up, at least what's left of it. It's a very sad photo, but only four years after being awarded the Pulitzer Prize the next year, Mr. Carter committed suicide in the playground where he had once spent so much time during his childhood. June 6, 1944. In an effort to open up a second front and take back Western Europe from the Axis powers, the Allies launched a joint cross-channel invasion to the beaches of Normandy. Tens of thousands of soldiers risked their lives to take the beaches constantly under heavy fire. On Omaha Beach, Robert Kappa joined the invasion in order to photograph the ensuing battle. In one of the only photographs to survive from that day, Kappa shot Private First Class Houston Riley as he jumped from his landing craft after being shelled by Nazi artillery. After being shot several times, the private swam to shore where Kappa snapped the influential photo. And to this day, it remains one of the only surviving photos that Kappa took that day and one of the only ones of that very important day in history. 9-11 is seen as one of the most tragic events of 21st century U.S. history. And on September 11, 2001, President George W. Bush was reading to a group of students from Emma E. Booker Elementary School in Sarasota, Florida. As he was reading, planes struck the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and one even crashed in Pennsylvania resulting in a total death of 2,996 people. This photo depicts the moment one of his advisors informs him of the attacks. From that moment on, and not just in his presidency, America would change forever. The juxtaposition of the innocent school children and the president's shocked reaction shows that terrorism is never out of reach. November 22, 1963, amateur photographer Abraham Zapperduder went to Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas to film his charismatic hero, President John F. Kennedy. As the car neared him, two shots were fired seemingly out of nowhere towards the president's motor cage. One struck the president's back, and the final blow struck him in the head just as the car passed Sapper Duder. His amateur film 
specifically frame 313 forever enshrined that fateful moment. For many Americans, the photo seared into the collective psyche, a painful reminder of the fragility of life as one of the nation's brightest icons was ripped from the world and changing American history forever. The Saigon execution was taken by Eddie Adams, an American photographer sent to South Vietnam to capture the brutal realities of the war. The Tet Offensive was an event in which North Vietnamese soldiers in the Viet Cong launched raids among many Southern Vietnamese strongholds and cities in order to take back and push back the American forces. General Nhiong Nhiok Klon received Bay Lo a member of the Viet Cong, and proceeded to execute him as shown in the photo, pointing a gun to his head and killing him in cold blood. This turned the opinion of the American people against the Vietnam War, for it portrayed the brutal realities of what it was to live and fight in Vietnam. As you saw today, photos can capture some gruesome moments. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to continue to explore the past and the present, please leave a like and subscribe.